Today is April 22nd, 2020. My name is Charles Suter, and in the next three or four minutes, I'll be presenting the subject, Rational Self-Counseling. Um, rational Self-Counseling is just a process for overcoming emotional distress. It's been around for quite a while, helped a lot of people, and I'm sure it will, it will help you as well. Um, I presented the, these topics before in previous presentations, such as overcoming emotional distress, overcoming melancholy, uh, rational challenges to irrational beliefs, part one, two, and three. So to kind of give you a quick summary of those uh, previous presentations, let me walk you through this uh, little flow diagram here. It starts with feelings of emotional distress. Most people uh, tend to have um, some feelings of emotional distress, probably three or four or more times a day, depending. And the application for rational self-counseling is when you, uh, you notice you're in emotional distress. First thing you do is you ask yourself, is this threat imminent? The answer is yes. Uh, you're about to, your, your house is on fire, you're in an earthquake, a car is about ready to hit you, you need to take quick action. And that's what you do. You proceed rationally. You take immediate action to protect yourself and you repeat those actions until the threat is eliminated. However, if you assess that you've been in a situation, you're in a conversation, you made a mistake, no immediate uh, threat to yourself, um, life, values, property, then your emotional distress is most likely a result of irrationality. And what that means is somehow in your subconscious mind, one or more of your rational beliefs have been triggered and they have produced what's known as emotional distress. Along with this emotional distress is a bubbling up from your subconscious mind, various self-talk, irrational thinking. So listen to your self-talk for irrationality and then apply the rules of irrational thinking. Now these are all rational challenges that you can make. You can apply one or all of them to each of the irrational thoughts that you might have. They include such as, is this an example of all or nothing thinking? Aren't there shades and degrees in between? Or overgeneralization without evidence? This is a very similar to jumping to er erroneous conclusions without sufficient evidence. This is an example of filtering out the negative, spending too much thing, time thinking about the negative. Maybe this is a magnification through exaggeration. Maybe this is just a little bump in the road and not as bad as I think it is. Maybe this is a case of emotional reasoning where your um, emotional distress, your feelings, justify your taking irrational actions. Maybe this is a moralizing should. We're all been conditioned through a process of socialization and we've been told what good people do or shouldn't do. We've developed a number of shoulds. You should not do this. She should not say that. Have any of these shoulds been triggered? Uh, is this an example of labeling or categorizing? The uh, subconscious mind likes to um, categorize situations so they know how to respond to it. Have I miscategorized this? Are there significant differences between this situation and my normal categories? And then the last two are, are where you're thinking you're not okay and where others are not okay. You have to remind yourself that you're perfect just as you are and so is everyone else. So. See how many of these rational challenges you can apply to each of these irrational thoughts. And you repeat this process until the emotional distress dissipates. You'll be surprised to know that just uh, reminding yourself, acknowledging uh, the prospect of irrational thinking is often sufficient to mitigate your feelings all by themselves. So again, you're invited to apply this rational self-counseling to any of your emotional distresses because emotional distress can be relieved with rational challenges. That's all for now. Remember to stay positive. You'll be happier, healthier, and live longer.